Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi has arrived in Tukia. He was welcomed in Ankara by Hakan Fidan, who also recently became Minister of Foreign Affairs after Tukia's presidential elections in May. Wang Yi is due to meet Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan as part of his visit. The visit comes just a day after he reassumed the position of China's top diplomat, replacing Qin Gang, who had held the post since December last year. Long-time Cambodian leader Hun Sen says he will step down in three weeks as Prime Minister and hand the position to his oldest son, Hun Manet. The announcement came after their Cambodian People's Party won a landslide victory in recent elections that were criticised as neither free nor fair. Hun Manet is currently the chief for the country's army. He won his first seat in parliament in this election. Ahead of the elections, Hun Sen said that he would step down sometime during this next five-year term. He has been Cambodia's autocratic leader for 38 years. As a truce that stopped the bloodshed in the Korean War turns 70, North and South Korea are marking their anniversary in starkly different ways. Satellite images of Pyongyang reveal a large-scale nighttime military parade. The images show large formations of the number 70 and slogans such as victory and succeed. The parade is likely to include 15,000 personnel and possibly feature new designs of nuclear-capable weapons. In contrast, the mood is more somber in South Korea. President Yoon suk Yeol has invited dozens of foreign war veterans to honor the fallen soldiers of the conflict that killed and injured millions. In a rare diplomatic frenzy, North Korea has invited delegations from China and Russia to the huge celebrations likely to be highlighted by a military parade in Pyongyang. They are the first known foreign delegations to visit North Korea since the pandemic, Pyongyang is looking to deepen ties with Beijing and Moscow. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu met his North Korean counterpart in Pyongyang and China's ruling Communist Party official Ling Hongzhong has reportedly seen or was reportedly seen at the Beijing airport heading to North Korea. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Wellington in New Zealand after his trip to Tonga. Blinken will meet government officials and watch the Women's World Cup soccer match between the U.S. and the Netherlands. He will then travel to Brisbane in Australia along with U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin to meet their Australian counterparts. Meanwhile, Austin arrived in Papua New Guinea as part of his multi-day visit to the Indo-Pacific region. He is scheduled to meet Prime Minister James Marape. The Pakistani Supreme Court has snubbed former Prime Minister Imran Khan's plea on the Tosha Khanna case. The appeal was against the Islamabad High Court decision to send the case back to trial court for hearing. But the Apex Court has rejected this. Imran Khan now fears disqualification at the hands of the trial court. Imran Khan has been accused of selling gifts he received when he was Prime Minister at hefty prices. Australia and New Zealand committed to strengthening ties in the Pacific after their leaders met in Wellington for an annual meeting. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said they were keen to show they are reliable partners and are able to aid and support Pacific countries. Earlier this month, the United States, Australia and New Zealand called for Solomon Islands Prime Minister to immediately publish details of a policing deal with Beijing over concerns that it could invite further regional contest. India is marking the 24th anniversary of the Kargil War in the Indian Union territory of Ladakh. 
Defense Minister Rajnath Singh saluted the fallen soldiers who laid down their lives for the country. He addressed a somber commemoration event after laying a wreath at the Kargil War Memorial. The minister said India is ready to cross the line of control to maintain its honor. After the wreath laying ceremony, the Indian Defense Minister also met family members of the fallen soldiers. Opposition parties in India have filed a no-confidence motion against the BJP-led government in the parliament's lower house. The new opposition coalition named Indian National Inclusive Development Alliance or India or INDIA has moved the motion demanding the Prime Minister to address the violence in the state of Manipur. Amid the protests, Home Minister Amit Shah attempted to break the deadlock by offering to discuss the situation in Manipur. Taiwan conducted anti-aircraft landing drills at its main international airport. Taiwan demonstrated its defensive tactics against an airborne assault of paratroopers and helicopters. This is the first time the Tao Yuan International Airport has been involved in Taiwan's annual military exercises. The airport, the island's most important air link with the rest of the world, six helicopters and around 180 soldiers took part in the drill the drill simulated the repulsion of an enemy force intending to seize control of air traffic control facilities at the airport. The United Nations has begun operations to remove over one million barrels of oil from a decaying supertanker off Yemen's Red Sea coast. As per the United Nations, the structural integrity of the tanker has significantly deteriorated and it is at risk of exploding. If unchecked, the tanker could spill four times as much, of, as much oil as the 1989 Exxon Valdez disaster in Alaska. The tanker has been moored off Yemen for more than 30 years and did not undergo any maintenance operations since 2015 due to the war in Yemen. The United Nations expects the oil transfer to continue for 19 days. Hollywood actor Kevin Spacey returned to court as the jury in his sexual assault trial continued deliberations he has pleaded not guilty to nine charges brought by four men, including multiple counts of sexual assault and one count of causing a person to engage in penetrative sexual activity. Spacey has suggested that his accusers were either lying or reimagining consensual sexual encounters. The prosecutor called Spacey a sexual bully who took advantage of his power as a major celebrity. Paris is gearing up for the 2024 Olympic Games. The Olympic torch for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games was shown for the first time at Paris's River Seine. The design of the Paris 2024 Olympic and Paralympic torch imitates the reflection of the Eiffel Tower on the surface of the Seine River. The torch has been made with lightweight polished steel and spots a champagne color. The torch will be used in the opening ceremony of the Olympics and will be held before more than half a million spectators. Specialized drones have begun carrying out deliveries of medical items in Europe. A new type of drone capable of carrying passengers carried out its first delivery and carried bags of blood. The drone was presented by the Belgium-based company Helicas. The drone simulated the delivery of the blood bags from one point to another over a distance of one kilometer. The drone is slated to be useful for medical purposes, particularly, particularly 
for transporting blood and medical personnel to disaster zones. Hip-hop legend Tupac Shakur's ring sold for $1 million at an annual auction in New York. The ring is made of gold, ruby and a diamond crown. The New York-born rapper wore the ring during his final public appearance at the MTV Video Music Awards on September 4, 1996. He was shot dead by unidentified assailant in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas just days later at the age of 25, the ring's winning bid was well above collectibles, broker Sotheby's pre-sale estimates. The initial estimate was between $200,000 and $300,000. At $1 million, Tupac's ring becomes the most valuable hip-hop artifact ever sold. Heavy rains have triggered severe flooding in Pakistan's eastern Punjab province. The incessant monsoon rains have submerged fields and homes in Nanon Dogar. Now, according to local weather authorities, monsoon rains are likely to continue during the week. Heavy rains have been forecast in Balochistan, Upper Sindh and Punjab over the next few days. Residents have been disconnected from their homes and are currently moving to protect their cattle and belongings. Over 50 pilot whales have died hours after strandling themselves on a beach in Western Australia. The port of almost 100 long finned pilot whales was spotted off Chen's Beach near Albany. The Parks and Wildlife Service was joined by volunteers who walked through the night to monitor the whales. A sudden wildfire quickly spread in the outskirts of Lisbon and caught residents and authorities by surprise. The fire started in a forest near a city in the outskirts of the Portuguese capital. Authorities evacuated 77 people from the area as a precaution. Around 400 firefighters and firefighting planes have been deployed to try and control the blaze. Mayor of the city claimed that 60 km per hour winds were preventing firefighters from dousing the flames. In a recent ruling, an Australian court has ordered Meta, the owner of Facebook, to pay $20 million. U.S. tech giant is accused of collecting user data through the app Onavo, advertised as a privacy protector without disclosure. The court found that Facebook used Onavo to collect users' location, app usage and website visits for advertising purposes, depriving thousands of Australians of informed choices. India's leading engineering firm, Larsen and to bro or LNT witnessed a remarkable 4.3% surge in its shares, reaching an all time high of $32.56. This, um, this jump comes on the heels of the company's strong quarterly results, with a substantial 46.5% rise in profit, backed by a robust order book. LNT also announced a significant share buyback worth almost $1 billion and a special dividend of $0.073 per share, further boosting investor confidence. Morgan Stanley downgraded Israel's sovereign credit risk profile after the country's parliament passed the first in a series of laws sought by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to limit the power of the Supreme Court. A research and invested advisory firm 
say that it saw increased uncertainty about the economic outlook in the coming months and risks becoming skewed to its advanced scenario. Snap Inc., the owner of the popular photo messaging app Snapchat, is facing a fierce battle for advertising dollars as it struggles to keep up with tech giants in the industry despite attracting hundreds of millions of users with its light-hearted photo filters and AI-powered chatbot, the company has been grappling with revenue growth and market competition, prompting questions from analysts and investors about its future strategy. In their latest earnings report, Snap Inc. provided weaker guidance for the third quarter than what analysts had predicted causing a significant 18% drop in its shares during aftermarket trading. While the company beat revenue and user estimates for the second quarter, concerns are rising that advertising money is shifting towards larger social media networks, leaving Snapchat with challenges in the constrained economic environment.